if you want to add a little icon to your page, which you can see usually in like, let's say the tab or something like that, you can see right there, add a favorite icon page to your icon. Uh, you're going to see that we will usually use a file called an ICO file. That's the extension. It's a little bit harder to make. You got to use a something on the web or something like that. You can use Photoshop to make it, but it requires usually an action or some kind of third party plugin. I, this ICO file, this ICO file has been used forever. It's changing. Things are changing a bit just because of the devices and newer browsers now support ping files. But I'm going to show you kind of a simple way to get this done. Down here, you'll see the HTML. I'm going to copy that and we'll explain it and tell you that this is bare bones. You guys, there's a lot more we could try to do to, to work with different browsers, but this content will actually go in the head section. So I'll put it somewhere up here, usually by the title, the meta information, something like that. And what we want to do is we want to name the file, usually according to what you want. It doesn't have to be favicon, but if you do, and you can see right here, this is for the favicon itself. If you do put a file called favicon.ico in the root folder, in the root file of your site, uh, Internet Explorer is said to look in there to find it, even if it can't understand what this thing means. Shortcut icon, this relation right here, this, this is actually kind of an old school thing for Internet Explorer. Shortcut is mostly Internet Explorer. Icon is what most n newer browsers understand, I should say. Not all of them, but newer them. And then we're going to put the, the image. This is actually an image file. We're going to stick it somewhere. And we also have an Apple Touch icon. And there's a bunch of these you can use. This is kind of the simplest way you could do it. But an Apple Touch icon is something for devices. Let's say touch devices that are iOS. Now, how do we get this file? Well, let me do this. I'll go out to my desktop real quick. And you'll see that we create ourselves an awesome little ping. And there's 50,000 ways to do this. The size of the ping, the size of the, the uh, icon you're going to make, it varies. You can pass lots of different. 16 by 16 pixels is what we used to use all the time. A lot of times these days I'll use a 32 by 32 pixel. And make sure it's that size. Okay. And it makes it hard to design because you got to fit it within that area. Then what you can do is to get this done, you can actually use something like Dynamic Drive, which has an icon generator. And I've already generated it. And you'll see it's going to create a 16 by 16 here. Um, you can also use something like this for Mac. I believe it's Mac only. I've never used this before, but I've seen it before. It allows you to create icons. The one that I have on my site is called convertiCon.com. You can see it right here. It's really simple. So what you're going to do is you're going to take an icon, GIF, or ping, or JPEG even, and just say, where is it? So I'll click Get Started. I'll find the ping, 32 by 32. Click Open. It's going to say, okay, well, which one? We're going to export it. It's going to say, well, what do you want to export it as? And we'll say icon in this case, in the original size. You could pick another size if you wanted to, but I'll save it. It's going to save it out there. And there we go. That's pretty much it. So there's my icon. If I go out to my desktop now and take a look, you're going to see, there it is. If I go back to the page in Dreamweaver, you'll see that we've got our favicon right there, and it should pick it up if it's in the root level. And root meaning that right there, that little slash, okay? Now, we also have an Apple Touch icon we can work with, and there are a bunch of different sizes you can do for this. We're just putting out a really generic one that's probably going to scale. This is for iOS devices, essentially. And it's, it's pretty much going to show up for, like, if they make a shortcut, if you will, on the uh, iOS desktop, that type of thing. And there's other locations it'll show up for. So we, we got to name it. We're going to name it, rather, something like this, Apple Touch icon ping. Go ahead and name it that. And we need to name it, make it as a ping, which is kind of exciting because we can make it out of different applications. Now, I'll use that same. Let me get back over to the, um, there is another one called Iconifier right there. Click on that. And hopefully it shows. There we go. This is another place you could go and create an icon if you wanted to. Um, it's going to download as a zip file so you can use it. You can choose a file and iconify it, if you will. If you want to create your own, you can do that too, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to Illustrator, and you can use a lot of different programs if you want to. I use Illustrator because it's, well, vector. You could use Photoshop, essentially. I'll go over and grab this favicon icon. Now, I tell you in the code or in this in the uh, on the page that we're going to use a 144 by 144 uh, dimension. Actually, as of June or July of 2013, 
with the new iOS 7 coming out. That's actually changed a little bit to 152 by 152. That's if you want to have generic size. Um, so you might want to do that. I've got my size already set here. I'm going to save it as a ping. So I'll save, uh, save for web. You can use save for web out of different programs. One thing you don't want to really do, you don't want to set transparency, okay? So if you use ping, you can use a ping eight. Don't set transparency on it. Make sure the mat is correct for what you want. If you do set transparency, I've seen it where it will actually put a black background back there. So you got to be careful with that. And then I will save it. You know, optimize it best you can. And I'll just stick it on my desktop and we will call it. Now there's two things you can call here. I'll call it Apple Touch Icon. Whoops. And I can even spell Apple. That's pretty good. Now if you call it Apple Touch Icon, essentially what's going to happen is Apple is going to put rounded corners and like a sheen on it. If you want it to look exactly like you have it, what you can do is you can put what's called pre-composed. So it won't put like that shine on it. So that's something you can do too. All right. I'll give it as pre-composed. I like it a little bit better. And save it. There we go. Now you can go over to your code and make sure that the name is correct here. I'll call this pre-composed. There we go. And that should do it. Put it in the uh, root level of your folder. You can see right there that slash means put it right in the top level of the folder. Right, but usually by your pages in a not so huge site. And there it is. Now this Apple Touch icon is going to be scaled on different sizes, different devices. It probably will look okay, probably look fine, uh, using HD as well. You can, if you want to get crazy and actually put sizes in these things and use multiple if you really want to get nutty. But this is the most generic favicon we can work with. So there you go.